morning, folks. Wind sweat at the UJ um, Indo Center. Uh, first game of the year. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We're coming live at UJ Sports Arena for the basketball qualifiers. They call it the BAL, Basketball African League, or is it Africa League? I think it was changed from Basketball Africa League to Basketball African League. We got here two major, major clubs. Ferro Viario out of Beira, and of course, Matero magic so beira is in mozambique somewhere in the central mozambique and matero magic is out of zambia i remember watching these guys at uh, the 2000 2019 2019 games and they were hard matero magic is not gonna be an easy easy game but as we know Mozambique and Angola are the powerhouses when it comes to basketball. They made it through to the first round the last time. And I'm very, very happy to be standing right here. Myself and Martin, who will be joining me in just a second, Martin Hoffman. He has been involved in basketball, the development of basketball in South Africa. And essentially what happened here was to make sure to, you know, to come out here and, uh, and make sure that these games actually happen. For a second, they did not know that the game was going to happen, and a few people just came along and raised their hands. And here we are, a beautiful arena, nice little wooden floor. In case you didn't think basketball was going to happen in South Africa, well, it's happening right here, right now. And yes, we are about to tip off. Like I said, Felix Chansam Mufuame, number seven, Jermaine Maue, number eight, Frederick Winda Kaela, number nine, Spoikan Ngoma, number ten, Chongo Chona, number twelve, Harrison Kaunda, number fourteen, Douglas Kandulu. Those are the cleared guys from Matero Magic. And let's also talk about Ferroviario, Tabera. Maybe by the time I'm done, by the time by the time by the time I'm done with these guys, I'm also gonna be speaking Portuguese, you know. I think I'm a quarter Portuguese. And three quarters black, so um, it's a good time to start learning Portuguese. Let's see if I can pronounce these names, right? So number four, Jermel Michel Kennedy, I think is out of the U.S. Number five, Armando Papista. Number six, Orlando Novella. Number eight, Ismail Numamande. Number ten, Ermelindo Novella. Number eleven, Elvis Hohuana. Number 12, William Kia Perry. Number 13, Helton Ubese. Number 14, Carlos Marnese Jr. Number 15, Alberto Antonio Senda. Number 17, Ayad Munguambe. And number 22, Celio Chirombe. So these are the Ferroviario da Beira. These are the guys that are going to be playing, representing the team coming out of Mozambique. As we wait, we wait for the Magic to jump into their, into their basketball uniforms. I'm not too sure why they came here ready to play at 12, and they are not ready to play because normally, as you can see with the Mozambican team, they are well and ready, all in uniform, and the warm-up tops ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in... A little bit.
So we live back in the UJ arena. I remember a few years ago we came out here and um, and hosted the N1, the N1 team. Man, this place was packed. It's so sad that these guys are not allowed. You know, people are not allowed. Uh, spectators are not allowed here. When we were here hosting N1, it was uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Now we look like it looks like. It looks like uh, Matero Magic is now okay. We are ready to uh, go for tip off, and they've got their uniform on. And here we go. And that tip off goes as number 14, Douglas Kandulu. Tall man from um, Matero hitting it all the way out. And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kebi Mahongwa representing the production team that brings you the best of basketball that the basketball sheriff you should go out there and oh that's beautiful ball movement beautiful ball movement from just the look of it it looks like it looks like um the bearer the bearer it's got this thing in check but it's too early to be talking about who seems to be better than the other Let's see how it's all going to go down with a three-pointer from number 10 here, Chongo Chona. Chongo Chona. I'll start learning all the names as we go. Look at the ball movement. Unfortunately, it's a turnover right there. Oh, nice. Nice little pass. No look pass from number 10. Looks like Chona's got, he's got this in check. And number four, finish the layup, Augustine Kainda. There we go. The man in charge, the man in charge, the point guard trying to rally his troops. Number 12, his name is William K. Perry. I wonder if he's from Mozambique or he's one of the imports out of the U.S. He looks like he's very calm as he brings in. He's rallying his boys, but I'm saying I love the way, I love the way the Magic are playing. It's looking really, really good, and they they can pass that ball real good. Nice little rebound, number ten. Shona again trying to put the layer, trying to put the, uh, the the ball back in the hoop, but um, I think it was a little foul there that was never called. That should be an easy, easy shot. It was supposed to be an easy shot, and yes, point guard against point guard, number four, Augustine Kainda, getting fouled by. William K. Perry. This is going to be a very, very interesting game. These guys are way too fast for my words. I'm trying to keep up with how fast this game is going. I'm looking at um, Augustine Kainda right there. And what is going on? Kainda, I believe any game, and, and pretty much all teams, if you do not have a good big man, a good shooter and a good point guard you might end up just watching your team go down so this it comes down to exactly that the point guard making sure he's the captain of the team or not necessarily a captain but a guy that makes sure that um you get to you get to rally a team and make sure they do everything that they're supposed to do pass the ball around like they are right now magic passing the ball around which is really, really... And the three-pointer goes up. Magic! Magic is looking good. Magic is looking good. These are really, really good games. But I won't be faced if I were um, the bearer. I won't be faced. This is just, you know, when the, the teams are trying to fill each other out. And so far, it looks like Magic has already got everything in check they say it's not it doesn't matter how you look it's really how you ball because when they came out here they did not even have a uniform on and they only got their uniform two minutes literally a few minutes before they they had to come and play so far they up five so far they up five and just like that it looks like they Mozambicans are Mozambicans are right back in it. 
5-3 is what the score says. And yes, we have a beautiful scoreboard that I've never seen in South Africa. So I'm saying from the looks of it, it looks like this that has happened in South Africa is really, really good that we're hosting these games. Otherwise, we wouldn't have seen this beautiful picture, wooden floor, beautiful scoreboard. And of course, good games that are happening right here in Soweto, where, where the apartheid was abolished by men and women who are currently right now enjoying the freedom that is happening in South Africa. It started right here where we are, UJ Soweto campus. You can hear, you can hear, the, you can, you can hear the, uh, the bench right here. Oh my goodness, it's looking good now. I'm loving this. The bench here at Magic is right here. I can't even hear myself. It's so loud. It looks like it's really, really packed out here. This is going to be a fire game. I wonder how Cape Town Tigers are going to do because from the looks of it right here, these guys are ready to ball. So Pera, the Pera coming out. Pera really, really wants to get the guy, his guys going. A point guard out of the States. It looks like he's out of the States. Actually, when I spoke to him earlier on, he definitely, he definitely is sounding American. Ball movement is beautiful. And it looks like he's one of the uh, their best shooters because they're trying to set him up. They're trying to set Pera up as the point guard to go out there and uh, get the threes. But as we do that, little hook shot from our big man number 14, Douglas Kandulu. He is definitely trying to get ball inside, but he's not he's, he's, he's not finishing. When you are a big man getting the ball inside, you need to finish. And a turnover from a um, uh, Mozambican team. Now I see the bench. The bench is saying to the Magic, they need to slow it down, take it easy a little bit. And I see the number 14, the big guy. He's He's camping inside. I think he needs to be told that he cannot be in there more than three minutes, uh, three seconds. Because you cannot just sit there and wait for the ball. We got shooters out of Mozambique. If they keep letting these guys shoot, it might be a problem. But uh, Magic coming back with a nice little layup and a foul, unfortunately not called. I think the guys are now, are now starting to realize that this is not going to be an easy one. And look at Peyra. Perry, I mean, I beg your pardon, Perry is telling the guys exactly what to do. The defense was slacking there. They just literally picked that defense and they finished the layup inside. And like I mentioned to you before, I've got eight guys on my team list. It looks like some guys did not, as there's, as there's a turn over there and Perry go for an easy lane. Um, there has been a problem with uh, some of the members from the Magic. It's only eight guys that are qualified to play, which is sad because it would have been really great to see everybody play. But it is what it is. Again, the ball keeps going to Douglas Kandulu, and he cannot finish. He's getting good looks for a big man, and unfortunately, it looks like this game is running away from the Magic. They started very well. And uh, let's go for a little break as the, the Magic take their timeouts. The score right now is 10-5. I think the last three wasn't counted, but Fe Ferroviario is looking really good. We'll be back. Okay, normally when things are not going well, you call a timeout. Let's see if the Magic out of Zambia 
can do anything about it. But it looks like also there's been a bit of a change in um, in the game to see what's happening. Oh, yeah. All right. So after the timeout, what has been happening? What has been what's happening right now is that you look at the you look at the 24 second clock. You generally have eight seconds to cross over, and only when the uh, 24 second clock. Only when the 24 second clock gets to 16 and you haven't crossed to the other side, then it's a turnover. But now the the I think the the refs got that one wrong. They thought it already was 16, but you look at the 24 second clock, it says 18. So you must always look at the 24 second clock to see if they've crossed and if there's still time, they must let them play. It's not about who shouts the the loudest. I think. I think uh, the refs were intimidated by the um, by the noise that, were, that was coming out of the Mozambican bench. At the end of the day, if the clock is at 18, the clock is at 18. But now it's changed to 15, so we're not too sure exactly what is going on with the with the call. Because if it's at 15 and they still this side, then 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 we need to see what is what the refs are going to do. So the shot clock cannot be at 15. If it's at 15, then it's a turnover. What happened is that, what happened is post the, um, the timeout, the Mozambicans decided to really go full court press and that kind of shook the Zambian magic. They were not too sure what hit them. And for a second there, they really, really, really got startled and they couldn't even get the ball over the line. While we're waiting to hear what's going on, go to Basketball Sheriff and subscribe because the Basketball Sheriff is what brings you the best in basketball in South Africa. And if you don't get to catch the games, you can catch the show, The Brick, Wednesdays at six o'clock, coming live to you on the channel, Basketball Sheriff. They're fixing the time. This is what I hear from the on the floor. One of the refs is mentioning that they're fixing the time. I see even the commissioner of the game, Charles Foster, is really getting involved also with the table to try and figure out now what must happen. If it's 16, then the time would have expired, so it's a turnover. Then Fer Ferroviario gets the ball. But if it's more than 16, then the Magic will get the chance to get the ball across and the game can continue. In basketball, every second counts. I beg your pardon, Perry is waiting to get the time right. And the coaches are going to talk about it with the senior ref. And they're going to talk about exactly what would a what would have gone down. It looks like uh, also the time on the clock, on uh, the game clock was supposed to be 8.50, 8.49 thereabouts. And that may have been sorted and we can go right back to the game. At least now the Magic seem to know what is about to hit them and that is a full court press. And with the, with the, with the, with the full court press, you really have to pass the ball around and all your guys need to know where they must be. Right, so there you go. 15 seconds, they should have just passed the ball. All they needed to do was pass the ball on the other side and they would have beat the eight second uh, time before you get the ball to cross. Right. I'm hearing Americans on the bench of uh, Magic. I'm not too sure if there is their owners or their coaches, but he's telling them that they're running a, a three-point play for one of the players. But as they were talking about that, then it's an easy, easy lay-in. As they move the ball, they're confusing the defense, and it was an easy picking of the zone defense to get the shot inside, an easy lay-in. Then we get the Magic also trying to run a three-point shot. Oh, a turnover, and we're going to get an easy lay-in. Oh, a nice little assist from 
our number four, Gustin Kainda. Gustin Kainda, the point guard. They seem so focused. He's all over the place, but the ball movement is killing. The ball movement is really killing the magic. They're literally picking this zone apart. They're picking the zone apart. But let's see what happens now. The game now is, you know, the game score sitting at 18-7. Ah, whatever that's going on inside, even if the ball gets inside for the Magic, it literally is not doing anything dangerous for um, Fifi Fiario. Right, let's see now. Nice slowing down of the ball by the Magic. Moving the ball around nicely. Shot and... They're still not finishing. Perry and an easy lay in. Oh my goodness. 27. What I predicted when we started that Mozambique being one of the powerhouses of basketball in the southern part of, of Africa, other than, Moza other than Angola, it's exactly what I think is going on. Magic seems to be really rattled. We, they cannot find the back of the net. It just seems like it's just a lot of work and they are not gelling at all. On the other side, Mozambique seems to be passing the ball really, really good. And if there's anyone that, is, that needs to be, if there's anyone Cape Town Tigers need to worry about, it really is this team, Roviaro. But once again, it's really good to be in South Africa seeing such quality basketball being played. I cannot wait to watch Cape Town Tigers also play the game that's coming next after this. The ball movement is really good. The ball movement is good. But as soon as the ball goes inside, unless it's a three-pointer and it's a foul, looks like, you know, they can't really get the ball inside. Even if the ball goes inside, they can't get to get the, the ball inside. Uh, the, um, they can't get baskets out of the ball going inside the paint. They end up going for the three-pointers. But maybe that may have worked. So if they are able to shoot the free throws, we got number nine, Sposhian Goma. Missing the first one. This is where they call it a free throw, so you can get free points. But unfortunately, it's not as free as one might think. You still have to make them. And he makes one of three. He has one more to go. As the Mozambican team also talks about it, so uh, talk about the little strategy that they should go at going forward. Perry bringing up the ball. Perry bringing up the ball. He's very confident about that. If you, if you have a very good point guard, you have a very good chance of winning the game. And a foul by number 14, he just went, oh, number 14, Douglas Kandulu, he's the biggest guy out there, but it looks like he's very slow on his feet. He's very slow on his feet. But Perry, Perry is a very, very, very good point guard. He seems to know what it is that he must do. The table here is a little slow, showing how many, how many fouls. Uh, Gandulu has and uh, I don't think it's the ref to be telling the, the play to stop so that they can see what how many how many fouls the table is showing the game must flow the game must the game must just keep moving right out of bounds and the game resume but that's such an easy 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 well played it's a play that they talked about, I'm sure. It wasn't the first time they do it. They probably did it in practice, and it just looks so easy. My goodness, it really is tough for the Magic to just get the ball out there, but they're still looking good, and a three, they, the bench expected that three to go, to go in, and a big rebound by Kandulu. And a three-pointer again. Still can't find the bottom of the net. Still can't find the bottom of the net. Magic is not going to win this game if they're going to be depending on the three-pointer in order to advance to the next stage of the ball qualifiers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here watching live the ball qualifiers. Those that qualify go for the next round of qualifiers before they go for the big, big tournament. There's been a big, big prize put on there for them.
for them and um, all this effort is for glory to be the continental champion so we got a substitution on the magic point guard we'll see now who gets to bring up the ball Augustine Kainda just got substituted. Look how easy, 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 easy they get those shots out, out of uh, outbound, outbound play. That outbound play is looking really good. I am saying, and I'm worried that the Tigers have a big, as a tall task to really take care of this Mozambican team. They're looking really solid. The score now 26-8. This is a big 18-point difference, and yet no basket on that. It looked like there was something else that was happening. But I'm looking at number 13, Helton Ubise from Ferroviario. It's looking good. He's looking good. The guys can score, and there's... The game is looking just too smooth for the Ferroviario. It's looking very easy as we take the timeout. Beg your pardon, Perry is telling the guys exactly what to do. The defense was slacking there. They just literally, the ball keeps going to Douglas Kandulu and he cannot finish. He's getting good looks for a big man and unfortunately, it looks. I beg your pardon, Perry is telling the guys exactly what to do. The defense was slacking there. They just literally, the ball keeps going to And we back. My apologies. I thought that was a timeout, but uh, it was the end of the first quarter. That's why the last basket for Ferroviario did not count. I was looking at the clock. There's something wrong with the clock. It says 2 minutes 44, and they're trying to sort it out. So um, we're going to try and fix that clock. The scoreboard is looking pretty, and let me see what the stats say. So the guys that are that seem to be doing okay um, from Ferroviario. Let's see. The top scorer right now is uh, Jamel Michel Kennedy. And uh, he, he seemed to have played the whole 10 minutes. Four out of six, 66% on the, on the floor. Um, and 0% uh, on the three-pointers. He seemed to be their best player as he got all of the most of their points, and they are followed by a fair share of uh, you know all the other players. Number eight, Ismail Nurman Nurma Made. He's, he's got 50% two or two from the field, and one of two 50% with the three-pointer, and of course um, William Kia Perry. Two, uh, two of four, 50% from the field, one of two from the uh, three points. And Helton Ubi said two field goals, one of one from the three pointer. He got 100% three pointers. On the other side, Matero Magic, they're really struggling. Only person that seemed to, to have scored the most, Federic Kaunda Kaela, 66%, two out of three on the field and the only person that has made a three. 
So this is going to be a tall task for the Magic to uh, really compete with Ferroviario. Ladies and gentlemen, as we wait for the clock to run down, as I was confused, I thought also it was a timeout and it was actually a fault on the clock. They read that clock run out so they can fix it once and for all. The score is 26-10. If you know basketball, you'd say it's too early to call it. So let's not call it just yet and hope that the Magic will find their feet and get back at this game. 30 seconds to go before we resume on the second quarter. While we wait for the clock to come down, remember to subscribe Basketball Sheriff on YouTube. And of course, The Brick, the show that you bring live to you every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And the clock seems to have run down, and we're ready to go. Magic ball, let's see what they have planned for this quarter. Number nine, Goma. he's now the new, the new um, point guard. And just like that, another 10 over. And the f that's supposed to be a foul, an easy lay-in on a fast break by number 17, Ayad Mugambe. I wish I knew where they, where they came from so that we can even tell you a little bit about that beautiful, beautiful turnaround shot by Harrison Kafunga. Harrison Kafunga looks like he came all fired up. Scored 30-20. They are <coughs> Ferreviario up by 20. And it looks like now we also we also getting little fast breaks on steals. And yes, the bench shot for the Magic is calling end one, but it was also end one. It was also end one on the last score that uh, Ferviaro had. Ooh, I love the way Perry is handling his point guard position. I like the way. I like the way P Perry is really handling the pressure. He's not, he's not rattled by the hard defense. Sure, he had a little turnover, but um, ultimately, he's the man who's controlling where the ball is going. A nice little look inside, pass, and a three-pointer. He is the shooter. Unfortunately, that didn't go in, but the game is looking really smooth for Ferroviario. We have a big guy in there, and unfortunately, he just can't get it right. He's getting the touches inside, and the, the coaches will tell you, the coaches will tell you the ball must go inside, but you expect your big guys to really do something with that ball. You expect these guys to do something with the ball whenever it goes inside. And a three-pointer from number six, Matero. He was being asked, where was he going? But I think he was thinking a three is better than a two. Chansa Mufuami. Chansa Mufuami. They're rallying back here. Let's see. 31 17. It looks like. Oh my God. I love uh, the guys inside my. You know, I don't know what the Magic's. Whether they're watching the same game that I'm watching, but. Ah, oh, that was really a nice put back. Maybe number 14. Douglas Kandulu should do just that. That's all he should be doing because whatever it is that he's doing, doing, you know, little jumpers from the inside just doesn't seem like it's working. Ooh, look at that little dribble. Razzle dazzle and a foul by number 14. But Perry is looking real smooth inside there. I love his game. The game is looking good. He's going to go to the free throw line to see if he can get two. And his shot is looking smooth, and I expect both of them to just easily go in. And I look at the stands. The Cape Town Tigers are in the building. They're probably here to scout and see how the other teams are playing and who to watch. And just like that, looks like I've jinxed Perry. Missed the first one. 
and I expect the second one to go in. Score sitting at 30-19 from 20 points now. has been cut in almost in half. And there he makes the second one. Splits a pair. But it looks like the Magic seem to have found their feet. But like I said, the three-pointer is not going to bring them back in the game. They need to go inside like they are now. And again, the three-pointer, and it goes in. Maybe they are a three-point shooting team. The lead now cuts to nine points. And it's looking really, really good. And it's like, might, we might just have, we might just be, we might just have a game, a game here on our hands. So the Magic Bench is complaining that um, he was pushed by his own man. But the ref is also tailing number 10 from the Magic, Chongo Chona, that he must watch his, um, his complaints because he might just get attacked if he continues with that kind of um, behavior. So it's a side ball. Perry will, Perry, Perry will lead by the ball. And yes, sometimes it's always good to tell the, to tell the bench to relax a little bit because if they continue talking like that, they might just end up with a tech on their hands. Right. Perry, Perry, he's not, he's not, he's not worried about, you know, trying to pass that ball too fast inside. He had three seconds, and just like that, it was a three-point shot. Fortunately, didn't go in. And Perry looking around, a nice little easy pass inside, and a three-pointer. Oh, wow, this three-pointer, the Magic needs to really take care of their defensive rebounds because number 13 is picking up all of that. Helton Ubise. Helton Ubise is picking up all those rebounds. And if they continue like this, it's not going to be pretty for the Magic. He splits the pair too. Free throws are not so great so far. Each, each and every player splitting the pair and Perry goes and takes a rest. We got now number six. We got number six, who's now Orlando Novella. Number six, he's probably gonna be the guy who replaces Perry as a point guard. But right now, number nine, Spo Spoichan Goma is the, is the new guy, and the three-pointer can only help you so much. You still have to get the big guys inside to really give you the easy point inside. The three-pointers can only work for so long. So number 20 went against them. And just like that, we're at the free throw line again, and he had to come out, give number eight, Frederick Gaunda Gaela, a chance to go out there and bring the magic back. Remember, this is a, you know, Basketball in Africa doesn't happen ever so often, so we don't know much about the, the players, where they're from, how well they're doing in their country. So we'll just tell you and do the commentary on the game as we see it. And again, he splits the pair as well. It looks like the free throws, we're sitting mostly on 50% so far. You compare that to the NBA, they'll be talking the really, really good guys are sitting on about 80, 90%. And he's supposed to do that. Oh, he's supposed to finish. These passes are more like, each pass is more like a turnover. Ah, I love the way these guys are passing the ball around and getting, getting rebounds. Look at that passing, passing around. That was a foul, unfortunately not, not called. Another foul and one. And one, ladies and gentlemen. This is by, their numbers don't look so easy to, to see. Number 17, Ayad Mungwambe. Ayad Mungwambe getting an easy one out of Ferroro Diario. So let's see if he can complete the three-point play. 
as we come halfway the second quarter. And the lead has gone now again to 14. And I don't think I don't think uh, the Magic practiced on how to pick a full court press because right now it looks very easy for them. An easy lane again, 36-22. This is going to be a problem. Uh, yes. He, number 14 needs to use his, his height as a biggest guy on the floor right now to really take advantage of, of the guys. Of the of the Mozambicans, but he must also watch. He cannot be camping in there because if he camps too long, he's gonna be called the three the three seconds. He cannot be in there longer than three seconds. But he looks young and inexperienced, and hopefully, he can get more and more of those fouls called because he's really being a factor inside. It's gonna be an inbound for the Magic. Inbound for the Magic. They don't seem to have any of the plays, out of bounds plays, because I'm looking at where the guys are going. I'm not too sure if they all know where they need to be. And it's an air ball out of the three, but he had to shoot that because the 24 second shot clock was coming really down to two. And that's why we came up with a very bad shot out of that. Three-pointer, air ball. Ferroviaro, that was a travel. I think that, I think it does help to have a very loud, a very loud bench because the <laughs> the refs also listen out to the noise from the outside. And as they said, travel. Literally, the refs call the travel. The ball, nice ball movement. Nice ball movement, and unfortunately, unfortunately, the big guy again. The big guy again, really, really, every time the ball goes to him, it's just another turnover. I think they need to work on that big guy. He's the biggest guy on the clock, but he still can't finish. Still can't finish. Movement, ball movement. This is exactly what they're looking for. And another, and another um, easy. Oh goodness! And they knew he was gonna go. In. The three-pointer was going in. I mean, <laughs> as, a, as, a, as the as the as uh, the Mozambicans got an, a this. Oh, look at oh, and the ref got hit. And the ball, oh my goodness, oh. I'm looking, I'm looking at two different things, two different games here. There was a game happening here with the ref getting knocked down, the lady ref getting knocked down, but it looks like he's all right. It looks like he's all right. But like I was saying, the passing, the passing for the Mozambicans is very, very crisp. They know how to pick the, they know how to pick the, they know how to pick the um, the defense right now, but finally, finally, the big guy is really changing the shots from the inside. But if this continues, and the defensive rebounds don't come for the Magic, it's gonna be a problem. The offensive rebounds will really benefit will really benefit the uh, the Mozambicans. But as I say that, a turnover and an easy lay-in on the fast break, the turnover is also uh, going to kill the Magic. As it is now, if you really, really want to say who is playing better, right now it looks like the Magic are really having trouble. Nice little pass and the three-pointer. Very good, very good ball move. As we go on two minutes to the end of the quarter, the score 43-25. And the ball movement gets to get these seconds. They call seconds against 
the Mozambicans. And that gives the Magic a break. Augustine Kainda back in the game. Really, the, his troops, the Magic. They're moving the ball around, but it's all outside the three-pointer. It's not going in because they don't have great presence inside. And again, going for the three-pointer and another, another air ball. Unfortunately, that just shows how rattled the Magic is right now. In control uh, is Ferro Fiario. As you see, 18-point lead, 43-25 with Ferreviario in control. We got a minute and a half to go before the end of the second quarter. Score 43-25. Terry, Terry is back. As he comes back, almost turns it over. Got saved. But I love the way they're so patient, you know. The Mozambicans know how to play with each other. It's a very, it's a good season team. Look at the passing inside. And an easy lane by, what is his number, number five? Number five, Armando Batista. Armando Batista. And the Magic do it right back at them, picking their zone defense and getting a bucket. They'll have to do much better than that if they are going to try and catch up because 18 points is not an easy, easy lead. Yeah, that would have been a bit of a walk, but um, I don't think the refs saw that. A foul, and then there you go. The way they move the ball, they're going to be a problem. It's not going to be easy for the Tigers, and it's good that the, guy, the Tigers got to, to watch them play first before they get to play them. Not to show what the schedule says, but um, the Tigers are going to have to prepare very well for, for this particular game, uh, team over here. Ferroviario is really, really looking smooth and know exactly what's going on on the court. First free throw goes in and the second goes through. And look at the defense, it's really, 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 really looking. Look at that, look at that, look at that. This is what, this is what, this is why any team would want to do a full court press, is to rattle your, your opponent so that they end up throwing the ball out, which is exactly what happened. So I do not think the Magic expected that they had to throw the ball out, but look how easy it is. Look how easy it is for uh, Ferroviario. They're passing the ball around easy because whenever you're playing zone, it's not as difficult as it would as you play full court. Ball movement leads to a missed three, but it was a good shot taken. Four seconds to go. He's got to shoot it. And the ball, and just like that. The game is, the first two quarters are done. 47-27, Ferro Viario up by 20. We'll see you in the third quarter.
I beg your pardon, Perry is telling the guys exactly what to do. The defense was slacking there. They just literally, the ball keeps going to Douglas Kandulu and he cannot finish. He's getting good looks for a big man and unfortunately, it looks, oh, a turnover and we're gonna get an easy lay in. Oh, a nice little assist from our shot and they're still not finishing. Perry and an easy lay in, oh my goodness. The ball movement is really good. The ball movement is good, but as soon as the ball goes inside, unless it's a three-pointer and it's a foul. Resume. But that's such an easy, 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 easy cut. And just like that, another 10 over. And a thing with that ball. You expect these guys to do something with the ball whenever it goes inside. And a three-pointer from number six, Matero. I don't know what the Magic's, whether they're watching the same game that I'm watching, but ah, that was really a nice put from the inside. Just doesn't seem like it's working. Ooh, look at that little dribble. Razzle dazzle and a foul, but okay, they need to go inside like they are now. And again, the three-pointer, and it goes in. Maybe nice little easy pass inside and then three-pointer. Oh, wow. This three-pointer the, is the new guy, and the three-pointer can only help you so much. You still have to get the big guys inside to really give you. That was a foul, unfortunately, not, not called. Another foul and one. Really. The refs call the travel. The ball, nice ball movement, nice ball movement, and unfortunately, and another, and another um, easy. Oh goodness! Will really benefit the uh, the Mozambicans. But as I say that, a turnover and an easy lay-in. I beg your pardon, Perry is telling the guys exactly what to do. The defense was slacking there. They just literally. The ball keeps going to Douglas Kandulu and he cannot finish. He's getting good looks for a big man and unfortunately it looks oh a ten over and we're gonna get an easy lay in. Oh a nice little assist from our shot and they're still not finishing. Perry and an easy lay in. Oh my
back. Welcome back to uh, Road to Bao Basketball Africa League. This is the first round qualifiers happening at UJ Soweto. Just down the road here, you can come and see Mandela's home, not so far from here, and Desmond Tutu. The only street with two Nobel Prize winners in the world. And just as we start, it looks like the aggressiveness of the Mozambicans continues with an easy jump ball. And in basketball, whenever it's a jump ball, there's alternating ball possession. And for now, it goes to Mozambique. Ferroviario. I need to get this name right. Ferroviario. I need to learn how to pronounce Mozambican names and Mozambican everything because it looks like they're gonna be on this in this tournament and come out being one of the two that makes it through. I actually have to check that because it might be we might actually be looking for two qualifying teams to go to the next round of qualifiers. As Perry makes an easy, easy eye. Oh, the the game that this point guard has, man, you can already see he is a seasoned point guard with an easy assist to one of his big guys. I'm looking at the Magic. They are really, really struggling. The ball cannot go inside. Uh, and as Perry was trying to cheat there, he almost found himself. Whoa, number 13 kicking out just because there was a collision. It was, an, it was just a collision, and he was kicking his, his feet out because he was a little angry that, <laughs> that he got hit. But the ball goes to Ferro Viario as Perry brings up the ball, ball movement. It looks like everybody gets to touch the ball before the ball goes up. Ball movement continues. And just like that, oh, oh, that was a terrible one. Looks like it was a knee. It was a knee to the um, to the thigh. That could be a that could be a career-ending injury. But we see that uh, number eight is back up. His name is Ishmael Nurmamande. He is feeling that knee a little bit. Checking if he can still play. We'll be right back at it. These are young men. Some of us, if we're too, some of us, if we had to have an injury like that, you're out for a whole week. Three pointer missed, and the ball stays. And as I was telling you, there's only eight players, so we're not looking at a full squad for. Oh, a full strength squad for Matero Magic out of Zambia. And that is simply because the guys were not cleared to play and only eight could play. That's why the rotations are limited to eight players. That as it may be, it is up to the team to make sure all the players are cleared and you gotta make sure that you get your full squad going. And this is why it looks very easy for Mozambique right now with an easy layup on a fast break. Matero are really finding it difficult to get the ball inside and they try and do it right now. Number seven tries a little move inside and right back at number eight who missed the three-pointer, Frederico Caicela. Whoa. He got hit. Terry guy hit one of the little guys out of Mozambique and he is literally pushing himself or at least pushing to get inside and get an easy, easy layup. Unfortunately, got hit and he'll go for the free throw line to see if he can convert the pair. Perry sounding like he's out of the US as he was speaking to me. He was speaking to me with a twin. And guys with a twin playing the way he's playing, it will be easy to predict he's from the U.S. 
I'd actually want to check if he can speak Portuguese. And if he can, maybe he might be out of Portugal growing up in the States. There goes, there goes the, there goes the full court press. And this time they break it quite easily. And now moving the ball around, which is exactly how you break a, a press. Another three-pointer. And this time it goes down. 53, it's supposed to be 30. The scoreboard is still showing 27. There you go, 53, 30, 23 point advantage. And the big guy does what he does best or what big guys must do. And a nice little block from the big guy and the ball is moving around. We have number four, point guard moving the ball around, rallying his troops. And the ball ends up inside, look at that. Oh, nice pass, but to no avail. Hey, the, the little last guy, Augustin Kainda, man, is showing his tenacity to go out there and get a get one of the guys fouled out of um, Ferroviario. And as that happens, they ask him to come out. Number nine is back. He's a big body, number nine, and hopefully he will be able to handle the pressure better. The big guy, does he have a touch? No touch. He is really need to, he really needs to work on that. On that shot because he's getting the shots, but he's not converting. And just like that. Oh, that is a no man. That was a foul. <laughs> it was a foul, but it was not called. But you're not gonna get all calls, so we just continue. The, the game must flow. We can't keep going fouls every second. But when it's a foul, it's a foul. Terry recognizes that the guys need a little break. Passing the ball around and it's a turnover. This is what happens with the no-loop passes. As you make a pass, you need to have that eye contact. The big guy again. OK, nice little pass inside. And Still, the ball is being passed around, but somehow, oh, okay, a big guy had a little pass inside, but uh, turn over because he wasn't expecting it. Number eight wasn't expecting it. Frederick Kayela from Taklas Kandulu. A big guy, Taklas Kandulu, we must remember these names as the tournament progresses. Perry bringing up the ball. Letting his troops know what to do. And yes, their passing is very, very meticulous. They know exactly where they're supposed to be to get the pass. And just like that, pass inside, then to the three-pointer, and they're converting their three-point plays. And that, ladies and gentlemen, or maybe my eyesight as I grow older, can't really see what's going on. I can't read that. I cannot read the number, but it was number 11. Number 11, Elvis Hohua, who had son, who made that, that three. As I was reading his name, I don't know if it was Perry or somebody else who shot that three. And the lead blows up to almost a 30-point game. They're almost doubling the lead from what it was just before the, um, the halftime. The lead was cut to as low as nine, and now it's as up as 29. So I think with the way the Mozambicans are playing, anybody can call it that this game is pretty much done. 30 point game, and they're smooth like they are, the way they are. I could safely say the Mozambicans are on their way to winning this game. The big guy, man, he's big, but he doesn't quite have... Is that a dunk? No dunk. Misses and no foul called. That was a nice little... Oh, there we go. There we go. That's how the Magic should play this game. You know, get inside there, get the easy lay-ins. But they were lucky. They were lucky because the previous play, on the previous play, that should have been either a foul or an easy one. And an, oh, 
And this is what I'm talking about. The point guard is on point. He's got eyes everywhere. He knows how they play with an easy lob for an easy lane. The ball movement for the Magic is not as smooth, but they have to try and get inside with a real Euro step. And still, we are not seeing the conversions. Another three-pointer with a nice pass from Perry. And no good at that, that time. I don't know what's going on with the Magic. They're just not smooth. It's like a lot of their shots and a lot of their passes are all over the place right now. There's a three-pointer, no conversion. Looks like they're not going inside for the big man anymore because the big man is just also not converting. I like the point guard. Perry is really in control of this game right now. And the passes, look at that. The passes are going where they're supposed to go. And that did not go down. And this is where the Magic really needs to convert. And as I say that, almost a turnover. Almost a turnover. And number nine, the point guard, Ngoma. Oh, the passes are smooth. Come on, give us a dunk. There still hasn't been a dunk here. He must leave the ball. He must leave the ball after scoring. Number 13, Ubise. He doesn't want to give us a dunk. And this is a man who's really doing well for Ferro Piario. But from how I'm looking at this, everybody seems to be playing very well for the Mozambicans. Oh, oh, there goes our first dunk. It looks so easy, it wasn't even as exciting. But we'll take a dunk to bring the little excitement to this game. 63-34 is the score as we go on that just under two minute mark. I love the ball movement. The ball movement is just picking this. And a shot at one second, 24 second clock is has run out and that's a turnover. I think they passed a little too much, and it looks like the strong squad goes out, and a whole five, a whole new five goes goes in. Normally, when um, the coach sub like this is when they declare that this game is over, we can now go out there and get everybody to play, touch the ball, have a little good time as they finish off the third quarter. Another turnover. Oh, bodies on the floor. The guys really want to win this. They're sacrificing their body as you see them going out there. And the sacrifice come up with the three-point shot from number 10, Ermelo Novella. Another turnover. And another turnover. Well fought by the Magic. Fifty seconds to go. Fifty seconds to go. And the game sitting at 66, 34, 32 point difference. It is worrying to see the Magic still struggling to score the ball. It is the turnovers, it is the defensive rebounds that they're struggling with. And it just continues. The ball movement and another turnover. The Magic is not going to see. Whoa, are we getting that? <laughs> Almost a dunk over number seven. But he was like, I am not becoming somebody's poster. Number 17 was going for a dunk. Ayad Mungwambe. That would have been the highlight of the game. He's gonna have to earn it from the three from the free throw line. And it drops in. I must say, Mozambique is really looking good. Cape Town Tigers gonna have to really have a plan in winning this and going through to the next round. And just like that, he makes both of them. 
And they go for that. For the full court press, and they break it easily. They break it easily. Oh. Yeah. Three point didn't go through, but number 14, Douglas Kandulu, got the big rebound as a big man, but he just isn't steady on that. As soon as he gets the rebound, brings the ball down, and any little guy can get. Nah, this is not easy for the Magic. Even the three point is rushed, and this is exactly what the, the Mozambicans want. And a shot at the last, at the buzzer. And just like that, the third quarter is done. 68, 34, 34 point difference. That is the score at the end of the third quarter. We'll be back for the last quarter. the number but it was number 11 number 11 Elvis who who had son who made that, that three the lead from what it was just before the um, the halftime no foul called was well, a nice little oh there we go there we go that's a play on the previous play that should have been either a foul or an easy one, and an, oh, and this is what I'm talking at this. Everybody seems to be playing. back for the fourth quarter before the fourth quarter as the fourth quarter starts let me tell you what's been happening on the stats side points from turnovers 28 for cfb ferroviario we will call it cfb it's club ferroviario tabera cfb points of turnovers 28 to 6 for magic points in the paint 34 to 18 fast break points 23 to 8 bench points 16 17 that looks like it's the bench, is, bench production is about the same, but the biggest lead was 34, which is where we are now. As the ball movement goes for a nice little three-point on the side, and it's a no-go. Biggest scoring run, 14-7. Lead changes, only three probably when we started. There was never a tie, and that is the name of the game. Looks like CFB is really, really in control right now. Actually, now that I can say CFB it makes my life a lot easier because I'm yet to really, really get used to pronouncing the Portuguese name Ferroviario. But I'll get it right. I'll get it right. But CFB right now is the name that we want to go with. As number four gets a three point. Oh, number nine gets a three point play. Scorpion Goma. We'll just call him Goma. I like his beard. He's probably trying to play like the beard in the NBA, James Harden with that step back three. There goes that ball movement. Never in a rush, not quick to wanna play, but there, too many passes sometimes get you a turnover. I like the way they're taking care of the ball. Every time the ball is outside, they sanitize it, recognizing and following the, the COVID protocols. Another three. And unfortunately, he ain't going in all the time. The threes, you can't rely on the threes if you don't have the three-point shooters. They call that the offensive foul because of that little elbow that he was... Um, these yellow numbers are very hard to read. 
trying to get his number so I could tell you his name. Number five. Yeah, number five. That's um, Armando Batista. He was pushing off as he was going for a, as he was going for a layout. But normally, if it's a, if it's an offensive rebound, it's not a shooting foul. Maybe I'm getting this wrong. Oh, that was followed by a technical technical foul, and number nine is going to take a free throw, and it's probably technical and ball possession. Free throws are not as free as one might think. Missed the first one. Let's see if he makes the second. Missed the second. And ball possession. So the magic. Let's see if the big guy can just turn around and shoot nicely. That was beautiful. He was about to shoot. He realized that he's not so great at, at those little mid-range shots. Passed the ball inside. Came up with the bucket. Scores 68-37. Big, big lead. There's no way, no way the magic gonna come out of this hole, especially if, if we're talking about the last quarter as, as the time keeps ticking down. Look at the ball movement. Look at the beautiful ball movement. Big guy with a big, big rebound. Well done to the Magic, but they're going to need a little bit more than that to get out of this hole. Are we going to shoot a three again? Nothing. Oh, nice big rebound by number 12. And an easy lay in. Number 12, Harrison Kafunga. No, yeah, Harrison Kafunga. That was, that was a big rebound to give his, his club two points. There's a shooter over here, number eight. Is he a shooter? And he just keeps passing. He just keeps passing. And the ball keeps moving from side to side and ends up in a beautiful three-pointer. Something that these guys really, really going to watch. Magic going to have to watch this ball movement. And the whole thing about playing ball movement, when you move the ball, you pick in the zone so that you can get easy, easy three-pointers. Or the best shot, which right now looks like if it's a three-pointer, it's being converted by CFB. Not too sure what happened there, but uh, might be another technical foul. Another technical foul and ball possession for the Magic. But the ball, the three-pointer went down, score 71-31, 30-point difference in seven minutes. Nine seconds to go is going to be a very tall task for the Magic to turn this around. Right. So the ref and the coach is uh, having a discussion. I'm not too sure what the big deal is. All right. They're talking about the team members must sit where the team is supposed to sit. If it's part of the team, he must sit exactly there. Otherwise, if he's out and he's not part of the team, he must leave the bench. That is the delay.
whatever it is that was bothering everybody is all sorted and we're back at it the time is not supposed to go until he picks up the ball and he picks up the ball and we right back at it three pointer not working out not working out perry back in the game and like i've been saying the ball movement is crisp everybody gets to touch the ball is everybody gonna touch the ball oh it's like they could read there those passes the extra passes sometimes are good to pick the the zone defense up but the problem is if you pass too much sometimes you get a turnover let's see if this is going to mean anything <laughs> the three pointer is not how the three point shot is not how the magic are going to win this game but if they don't have an inside play i guess they have to settle for the three pointer they say if you live by the three you gotta die by the three right now the magics are dying by the three you must watch the difference perry is gonna pass the ball inside but the first pass second pass third pass and a three because he was wide open which was a good it was a good pass nice little rebound by number number 10 another three he should make that and they all going for the rebounds they're all going for the rebounds make ishmael norman Nurmamade. he fell they just figured okay they'll give him a foul perry bringing up the ball ball movement again ball movement everybody touches the ball well almost everybody everybody but one person big guy with a big rebound he must take it easy as to who he's passing that ball to are we having another three-pointer nope number nine seemed to like oh that wasn't even meant for him was a, that wasn't even meant for the big guy but uh because the guys can jump here number 12 got the ball got fouled harrison kafunda he'll go and try for for the free throws and as he does that let's remind you this game is brought to you by um basketball sheriff if you want to know who they are you go to the basketball to the basketball sheriff on youtube check out the basketball page basketball sheriff bring you all the best basketball in south africa and we have a show the break every wednesday six o'clock bring it live and if you miss it you can catch it on the channel basketball sheriff any time to check out all these games cfb moving the ball again wow a little foul there but he didn't get no foul look how fast these guys are yeah it's a little push underneath a little push underneath number number 17 uh, ayad mugwambe oh number 13 i'm sorry Halton Ubise is probably their biggest guy and he's very solid inside. I think he pushed. He pushed to um, try and free himself to get the rebound, but um, the ref saw that. And another three off the board. I'm not sure if he called it number seven. German Maue. I don't know if you call that. Look at that. Look at look at that. Look at that. This is beautiful. This is basketball made easy. This looks too smooth, and I think also the, the magicians here, I don't know if they have magic to bring this back, but they are admiring that pass from Perry. Oh, it's a foul. It's a foul. It's a foul. Not sure if they wanted to take that foul or let that ball be finished by number 14, um, Kandulu, because Kandulu, he was about to finish all that up if they didn't call the foul. He's going to have to now go to the free throw line and earn it. Number 17 getting replaced by number 11. Mungwambe getting replaced by Huwana. I like the, the way um, the subs are also going. Everybody gets to play very, very organized. I thought uh, the Captain Tigers are organized. But uh, just from the look of, looks of it, CFB is also organized. 
I can tell you right now, the magicians were not very organized because when they got here, they didn't even have uniform. So I'm not too sure how they thought they were going to play. But look how organized that is, you know? The ball starts from the inside, outside, and inside, and outside again. And just like that, the three-point goes down for CFB. Number eight, Ismail Nomamade. Oh, big guy, oh, big guy, oh, big guy. You know, must pass the ball. Can't be spinning, making spin moves. There we go. That is a turnover by the magicians. They wanted a foul, but they wouldn't get that. The magic is just can they just can't see past this strong defense from CFB. The clock keeps ticking down. We had three minutes twenty. And the score 76 40, 48. Tough, tough, tough game for the Magic. No three point. And I did say offensive rebounds for the for CFB is just giving them second chances. And they are draining the three pointers. They can shoot very well, these guys. And again, you can see the Magic are not ready for this tournament. They are just being picked. Picked about, the three-pointers are flowing. Everybody seems to be shooting however, however they want. Yeah, it's a nice little pass over there. Oh, you waited for everyone. Oh. And then he goes and shoots a three. And again. The three-pointers are just not falling for the Magic. Big, big, big rebound by number 13, my man, Ubise. Big boy play, big boy rebound. And now, with a little foul, he's going to have to go and shoot a pair or easy. Nope. The ref say no. It was just a... A mere foul, they're gonna have to go back and uh, get it up the floor like they would normally. The defense is extended a little bit for the Magic. Again, the same play that I saw earlier that ended up in an easy, easy. Ah, oh, look at that, look at that. Big rebounds, putbacks. This, these guys are no match. They are. The Magic are no match for CFB. CFB really, really, really came to play. 82-48. Matching their, their biggest league, 34 points. Whoa! No, just give it to them. They are so, so, so... Oh, he stepped on the line. Stepped on the line. I thought it was a foul and one. The second unit here is also looking really, really good. As we are a minute and a half, just under a minute and a half before the end of the game. And the passes, again, are looking really, really crisp. Look at that. Passes on the shots, and that didn't go this time around. Whoa! He nearly dropped him, but you cannot keep... Okay, I guess he's their best three-point shooter. Number six, let's see with his stats. Mufuame, his stats are saying 36% uh, from the three, so I guess he trusts himself enough to say 36% is all worth it. Whoa. The big man, he gets the rebounds, but he brings the ball down. That's why the little guys keeps hitting the ball and hitting it out of his hands. He needs to secure the ball and really be strong. Maybe he must watch Dwight Howard for a second, see how he secures the balls with the muscle there. Oh, number six. Number six is really, really, he's got like cut blinds to shoot as he wishes now. I guess they're just saying, look, his three-point shot is better than anybody else's anything. 
because he's the only one that seems to be to be dropping the ball is in the, the bottom of the net and again defensive rebound i mean defensive rebounds are nowhere to be found for the magic and they were lucky there they were lucky there that the three-pointer was oh oh nice breaking off of oh my goodness oh my goodness the magic the magic broke down the full court press got to the other side number four fully in control of the ball gave it to the big guy and again it just amounted to nothing the big guy and as we try the last shot and just like that the game is over the first game of the bow qualifiers is over the score 81 51 40 point difference and just like that the magic get to experience what it's like in 2021 to try and fight in these qualifiers big 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 difference between the two teams one came really ready and the other one not to show only eight players could play for the magic i wish and i hope they'll be able to sort out their game uh, their players get them all clear to play so we can watch a better game my name is kevin mahoma signing out after the first game basketball sheriff from the production we'll see you in the next game Thank you very much. And the